But Senator Tim Scott is running for president. The senator from South Carolina joins me. Good morning, Senator Scott. Welcome back. Good morning, Hugh. Thanks for having me again. Appreciate that. President Biden is in Israel as we speak. He has said today that the, quote, other team, close quote, is responsible for the explosion at the hospital in Gaza. But on the way over, John Kirby, his spokesperson, said he was going with tough questions for Israel. Is President Biden doing enough for our ally Israel in its hour of grief and as the danger continues to mount for the Jewish state? Here the answer is simply no. I, I'm, I'm glad he wants to go over there and be helpful. Unfortunately, his comments show daylight between the administration and the, and, the, and the Jewish state. One of the things you can't say is we're going to ask tough questions. John Kirby finds himself out of sync with the notion of shoulder to shoulder and back to back. That comment sends a signal. And at the same time, I believe that their strategy is to appease somebody on the other side of this issue. And unfortunately, what we've seen is Abbas says from the PA, we're not meeting with them. Uh, Jordan, questions. What we're starting to see is that the weakness of this American president has been felt and it is reverberating around the Middle East. That is bad news for shoulder to shoulder and no daylight. I said it before you, and I'll say it again. I find the Biden administration to be complicit. It's the weakness on the global stage that invites attacks. It is the negotiations, $6 billion, that helps to fund the attacks. And once again, the first response from this administration was to refrain from responding the message they sent to Israel. That combination plus the words of John Kirby, only reinforces that this president needs to grow a backbone. The president has not yet named Iran as responsible in any way, shape, or form for the massacre on uh, 10-7. Do you hold Iran responsible, Senator Scott? Absolutely. One of the things I said very consistently is the $6 billion funds terrorism. How do we know that? 90% of the money that goes to Hamas comes from Iran. What did Hamas say very quickly after the attack? Thank you to Iran. What did the president from Tehran say? The president of Iran says, we will use the money any way we want, Hugh. I can't think of better breadcrumbs that leads to one conclusion. Iran, the largest state supporter of terrorism in the world, the strongest backers of Hamas and who controls Hezbollah, has been clear about their intentions. Hamas and their doctrine is not simply to wipe Israel off the map. It's to eliminate every Jewish person on the planet, and they hate Western democracy. All that links back to the ability to have the resources from Iran to carry out these devastating, disgusting, evil attacks. Now, Senator Scott, you're running for the nomination against a, a field of people that have a lot of national security credentials and against a former president who was you know, commander in chief for four years. How are you going to distinguish your ability to handle these crises versus their ability and Joe Biden's ability to handle these crises? Well, that's a great question. And thank you for asking. I do think it's important to note that the all the sanctions that we have around the world flows through the committee that I'm the leading Republican on, the banking committee. So when we talk about the ability to sanction foreign countries, it flows through the banking committee. When you think about the challenges that we frankly have on our southern border by my legislation that I created earlier this year that sanctions the accounts and freezes the assets of the Mexican cartels that I got passed through the Senate uh, Banking Committee, and frankly is now part of the National Defense Fund, that is a banking opportunity for sanctions. You think about the Finance Committee that I've set upon for the last decade, where I have an opportunity to talk through trade deals, negotiation, uh, those things flow through the Finance Committee. My time on the Senate Armed Services Committee, understanding the actual threats that we face around the world in addition to the transition from the counterterrorism strategy uh, under Jim Mattis, General Jim Mattis, to the current near-peer competitor strategy that we have, we are going to have to once again reinforce our standing by being able to have three conflicts on three different continents. That so, happens through the experience I've had. And then I'm on the Foreign Relations Committee. Uh, 
those experiences uh, over 10 years, I match that against anybody. So, Senator, you saw the announcement NBC and Salem are, are co-moderating the next debate in Miami. Do you think that debate should be focused on national security predominantly, given the world crisis that we're in? There's no doubt that it should be a serious part of our debate. Probably half the time that we spend should be where we are from a national security standpoint, from our southern border to the three conflicts that we're going to have to be prepared for, whether that's in the Indo-Pacific, the Middle East, Eastern Europe. Frankly, we have real challenges in South America. We've seen socialism spread like a cancer. We also have, without a question, here at home, we think about the importance of our national security apparatus, the most powerful weapon, the greatest deterrent that is non-kinetic is our economy. If we're not having a serious conversation about weaponizing our economy by having supply chain resiliency, we're not actually having a conversation about our national security. We do have foreign threats, but the strongest weapons we have is an industrial base that builds things here at home. Not understanding that, you miss the actual picture of national security. Senator Tim Scott, thank you for joining me. Vote Tim Scott is his website, Vote Tim Scott. Dot com. Senator, keep coming back. I appreciate your making time this morning in a busy schedule.